That is correct. The shirt, ladies and gentlemen, is back on. We're talking James Bond again. I've got to look the part, man. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're doing the five Daniel Craig James Bond movies ranked worst to best. And I've said a few times on the channel, Daniel Craig is my James Bond. Prior to him, I wasn't really into like James Bond movies, if I'm being totally honest. Even growing up, my dad loved James Bond. I saw James Bond like every weekend on the TV, but... It just worked for me. However, DC is my James Bond and the movies have come to an end now. I thought, you know what, we need to rank them. And standard disclaimers, this is not the factual list, ladies and gentlemen. This is my useless nerd opinion. However, if you wanna be truly, truly awesome, please do share your list down below. I love interacting with you guys and girls. Let me know down below, that'd be awesome. Let's crack on with the list. Obviously the first one is the worst one and it's pretty much the worst one on most people's lists, and it is Quantum of Solace. I did re-watch all the movies prior to this, and it's definitely still the worst one for me anyway. If we're rating it out of 10, for me, it's still a 6.5 out of 10. It's not, like, terrible. It's definitely better than average. It's just, it came after Casino Royale, which is... For me, a beyond God tier movie, and it was no way near as close to that. It was a massive letdown. Also felt very, very choppy. However, it has got things I do like. Obviously, Daniel Craig returns from Casino Royale, continuing the story after what happened to Vespa in Casino Royale. It's still great to see the emotions and stuff. It's just the actual storyline for Quantum of Solace is definitely the weakest one out of five. If you mix that with the fact that some of the action is a little bit blurry, is a lot of shaky cam, it is choppy, it's way too short. And yeah, you've got the worst in these movies, James Bond. Again, for me, it's a 6.5, definitely by no stretch an average or bad movie. Also, I don't know if it's just me, but of the five, the music in this one, the intro song, it's, it's kind of dead. <laughs> Next up is Spectre. This movie gets crapped on by a lot of people. For me, it's a huge jump from Quantum. Again, rain out of 10. For me, man, I'm keeping it real. We're at an eight out of 10, yo. I actually really enjoyed the story in Spectre. I thought it was well underrated, man. I like seeing the story threads from Casino Royale through Quantum through Skyfall, and of course, ending up in Spectre. The Spectre organization, they felt deadly and dangerous, very undercover in the movie. That's what I wanted to see. As always, you guys know, villain life is my life, baby. The villain in this, Christoph Waltz. Banger, mate. Absolute banger. He's so calm and collected, yet scary and creepy. I think he just nailed that role, man, on the head, mate. Opening scene in Mexico with Day of the Dead, which is something I really enjoy. I saw it on a big screen, kind of went fanboy mode, love seeing it. Again, DC, I'm just going to say now, he's amazing in all the films, so I'm going to stop like saying how good Daniel Craig is, but he owns the role by now. Two standout scenes for me is obviously when James goes undercover in the Spectre thing, and my guy just says like, James, I know you're there, mate. That was so creepy in the cinema. I was like, whoa, man, this guy is no joke. And of course, Dave Batista, the fight on the train is so good. To be fair, even the chase after that scene involving Spectre, epic, man. This movie's really good. I think a lot of people, it's that hard thing where it's like, Casino Royale was so good, Quantum went down, Skyfall was so high, and then this is obviously down. I think people put it lower than what it should be. For me, I still love this movie, man. Welcome, James. It's been a long time, but finally here we are. Next up is No Time To Die. At the time this recording, I actually saw No Time To Die yesterday, so it's fresh in my memory. Banger of a movie, man. Just the longest James Bond movie, and it is entertaining from start to finish. This could be the best, like, ending of a large chunk of movies that I've seen in a long time. The ending was so good. I know some people didn't like it. For me, it was satisfying and it goes with like the dark tone of the other movies. And of course, we're seeing things set up in Casino Royale and through all these movies and we're seeing it still in the fifth and final movie. I love when movies do that. The relationship between Bond and Madeline Swan, I didn't like that so much in Spectre. I loved it in this movie. I said in my review, like it felt real. The villain in this was not as good as Spectre's villain. For me personally, it let it down a little bit, but the stakes are so high in this movie. The plan that the villain has, it's it's absolutely bonkers, mate. It's just insane. All the action, the fight scenes, the chases, everything looks so good. There's things you ain't seen before in Bond movies in this. I really did appreciate it. Also, the song, I forgot to mention, the song Inspector for me, 
That's a 10 out of 10. Banger, mate. I'm gonna give the same score for this. The Billie Eilish song, No Time to Die. Again, 10 out of 10 for me. General goosebumps in the movie theater. Overall, an awesome, epic movie to end this DC reign of Bond movies. I'm so glad Daniel Craig had this ending. It's just, for me, it worked perfectly. If we're giving it a rating out of 10, I already reviewed it yesterday, but if you missed it, I gave it an 8.5 out of 10. <laughs> There is two movies left. Now, you guys know, when I give something a 10 out of 10, I call it a god tier, but there's a rating beyond, mate. Beyond god tier is for the movies that I say are part of, like, my favourite movies of all time. I don't put them on, like, lists. They're just too personal to me. Both of these movies have that score. I genuinely was like that. And, like, any day of the week, I could be, like, swapping these around. I'm sitting it like this for now. Yeah, we're gonna roll this. Next up is Casino Royale. Again, this movie and obviously Skyfall's next, they are identical to me. I love both of them equally. When I saw this movie, and I did not give a crap, bro, about James Bond. I'm just keeping it real. I didn't care. When I saw Daniel Craig, after about 20 minutes, I was like, yo, this is like gritty and real, and I'm loving it. He instantly transitioned into my James Bond. I said to myself there, I literally remember myself thinking like, I could watch loads of movies with this man being Bond and I'm gonna love it. The story is extremely complex. If you're not paying attention, you, you're gonna lose your mind, mate. The action is on another level. Obviously, Bond is very new to becoming 007 and you see he makes lots of mistakes. It just brings him an element of being human. And I think like the other James Bonds, where well, they can do things that i never seen before, mate. They don't have a scratch on them. That's what I just never liked. This felt gritty, this felt real. The action is so sick in this movie. By the way, I'm gonna say now before I forget, the opening credit scene, the music. It's really tough to think like what one's my favorite one. Again, this is a 10 out of 10. To be honest, Adele Skyfall, it's a 10 as well. Those four, I give them 10 out of 10s. They just give me goosebumps every time. This is probably the best one for me personally. Next, Skyfall and then Spectre, the, the writings on the wall, they're like equal, man. So I, I can't do them. I think Billy Eilish should be after, but again, they're all 10 out of 10 for me. All right, let's go back to see the row. I just went on for the little side thing, talking about music. The key thing in this movie, the relationship between Bond and Vespa, and you believe it. It feels real, like, you just feel a connection, man. Every time I watch this movie, I genuinely get teary-eyed by the end. It just feels like it's bad, mate. It's a bad ending. It's very emotional. It's just an emotional movie, yo. If you think logically, this movie's quite long. A lot of it takes place playing poker. I know a lot of people do not give a crap about poker, but they love this movie just because it's done in such a good way. I have seen this movie so many times. It's always going to be beyond God tier. Casino Royale is an absolute... Banger. And of course that means next up is Skyfall. I don't know where to begin. This is the one that I think a lot of people, again, are either going to say this is the best or probably Casino Royale. This is crazy, mate. It's just, I like new technology and seeing like that go against Bond, and it is just ruining him, bro. And then by the end, you have this kind of like Home Alone situation where he just set up the house with booby traps. I absolutely loved it, mate. This movie, the story is just 10 out of 10, mate. The story's so sick. I also wasn't really a fan of Judy Dench's M in the first two movies. And in this, I was genuinely sad by the ending. Like, hopefully I ain't spoiled it for you guys, but Skyfall's been out for a long time, bro. So you've probably seen it by now. Also, the villain, is he's probably the best across all five movies. That's just my opinion. I really think Mads Mikkelsen done an amazing job in Casino Royale, but I still think, man, Skyfall villain, it's too good. Action in this felt the best and the most real, but the things that really make this movie stand out is just things you've never seen before. Bond going to the island alone, that whole scene, the speech about the rats, you never see this stuff in Bond films. Hella creepy, totally awesome. I also love a good training montage. Obviously, Bond gets wrecked at the start of the movie, comes back, and he has to go through these like things where he's doing pull-ups, he's doing runs, and he totally fails, bro. But obviously, M gives him the chance. You've never seen that in Bond movies before. I loved seeing it. Open the door, please. Open the door. Health and safety. 
Carry on. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know how long this video is going to be, but I swear down, I can sit here all day and talk about how much I love Casino Royale and Skyfall. They mean a lot to me. Some of my favourite movies of all time. Again, they could be like this any day of the week, depending on how I feel for now. I'm setting it that Skyfall is the best, but... Obviously, you guys know, man, they're on the same level for me. Ladies and gentlemen, if you made it to the end of this video, I love you guys, man. Thank you so much for watching and supporting your boy. I really appreciate it. Again, genuinely, please let me know down below. Anything you want to say about Bond, your personal list, or hell, if you want to say your personal favourite Bond, let me know down below. That would be awesome. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in a bit.